Hey, salut friends. Today I'm sharing my impressions of Barenia from Yermes with some detailed discussion pointers around this release before going to the smell itself. Firstly, there have been rumors seemingly out of thin air that this is a limited release exclusive to Paris, positioned like an Hermès sauce or Gallo de Hermès, which was a standalone release. Well, I can report after a conversation with the Hermès boutique, all of that is not the case. This is a straight signature release for women, similar to Twilly, basically for the mainstream wider clientele, with probably hundreds of thousands of bottles already produced in 30, 60 and 100 ml refillable configuration for boutiques all over the world, which makes it even more obvious that this is a big release. So with that out of the way, what is this about? The name Barenia refers to a particular type of soft, buttery, calfskin leather held in high esteem by Hermes and used in many of their leather goods like Birkins and Kelly's. As such, it is much preferred by their clients. We have seen Dobli, Valinka before in fragrances. Barenia was also in Kelly Kalesh, which was made by their then in-house perfumer Jean-Claude Elena. Their last new feminine release was Twilly in 2017, which had a lot of flankers and has been fairly successful. So I was a bit surprised to see another brand new women's release in under 7 years, although that was after Elena left. Speaking of which, Barenia Eau de Parfum is a September 2024 release, made by their current in-house perfumer Christine Nagel, who also made Twilly. The bottle design itself is inspired by a dark collar bracelet or collier de chien in French. Brief from the house, Barenia brings the symbiosis of body and soul somewhere between scent and skin. The sensuality of this Hermes Chypre is revealed in the balance of strength and softness. Barenia bears the name of its wearer. Shaped by the skin, supple and sensual, it embraces the spirit with audacity. Word from the perfumer, quote, Barenia is an enigmatically attractive scent, attaching itself to the wearer's skin, the signature of an instinctive, captivating and unforgettable woman, unquote. Now, if you have watched my channel, you know I'm a big fan of Hermes. In fact, in spite of some criticisms, I think they are the best designer fragrance brand in the world at the moment. I have also generally liked many of Christine Nagel's work, Speaking of a leather fragrance, she is 3 out of 3 in my book, with Gallo, which is one of the best Hermes fragrances, I think. Veilert Valinka was also good. Parik from this year, again really good. So I had a fair amount of anticipation going into this. The family of the scent being a sheepra also was exciting. The notes were a bit odd. Butterfly Lily, Oakwood, Miracle Berry and Patchouli. There was no leather mentioned officially. But there was one other note which surprised me, shocked me and concerned me, made me speculate a lot of things, not only with respect to this fragrance, but also with the future of Hermes itself, which is Aki Gala Wood. It is mentioned right there, the warm trail of oak wood and depth of Aki Gala Wood highlight the unique magnetism of this composition. If you don't know what Aki Gala Wood is, it is a proprietary ingredient from Givaudan, fractioned from patchouli. In recent years, it has got an infamous reputation because of perfumer Quentin Biche, who used it in Bois Imperial and notably in Ganymede and other fragrances for Marc Antoine Barrois. In small doses, it just adds some polish and sheen, but in large doses, it can be so diffusive, almost radioactive sensation with its mineralic, metallic, woody, spiky, spicy, musky, synthetic, abstract smell. Since it delivers performance and sales, it seems more and more houses are asking for it and consequently, Givaudan perfumers allegedly try to plug it in everything, probably for some incentive. You can see it mentioned as a note explicitly in many fragrances made by Givaudan. Another point being that there was a rumor few weeks ago claiming that Quentin Beach is being considered to make perfumes for Hermes. The article did not conclusively mention if it is on a project basis or as an Inos perfumer or a co-perfumer, but this just adds more steam to that topic. We will wait and see what happens. With all that being said, let's get to the smell itself. 
When I first spray this, I get a lot of sweet fruity notes, lively, effervescent, youthful, sweet fruitiness coming from the Miracle Berry. It's not exactly the same, but it reminded me of this underlying sweetness from the Twilly line of scents and Kelly Kalash to some extent. Miracle Berries kind of taste like less sour cranberries and that's how they are used, I think, to make food less sour. So that bright, fresh, somewhat tropical fruitiness comes through. Nothing like yellow with the quince. In fact, I think this could have been a flanker to Twilly in some ways. Right away, it also made it clear that this is clearly a feminine leaning scent in the traditional sense. With the fruity opening, I also get the lily. This clean, sweet, fresh, plush, exuberant white floral smell. Somewhat spicy too. I thought I was even picking up some ginger here like Twilly, but it could be this butterfly lily which tends to have a spicy facet. This fruity floral part really is the main center of the fragrance. It is also fairly soft and airy. I guess that's why they keep mentioning about blending with skin and such. Does not come across like a big perfume, this one. Performance is fairly understated, which is fine. It is a very clean, fresh, smooth, simple scent profile. Not a lot of texture at play. As it dries down, the fruitiness dies down a bit and the lily starts to become somewhat creamy. I'm getting some patchouli and vanilla in the base as well. A bit of mossiness, probably from the patchouli, as sanitary as possible. Some nondescript, mineralic, metallic, earthy, sheer woodiness. Extremely modern, which could be the combination of oak wood and akigala wood. Not a tangible bark like woodiness. Again, if I have to compare it to Twilly, no one is going to smell that and say, oh, I smell sandalwood in there, but it has that note. Thankfully, the Akigala wood is not overdosed, so kudos for that. So the question comes down to, is there a prominent leather in here? I don't think so. In fact, like I said in the beginning, it is not even an official note. What I get is this extremely soft, fluid, supple, buttery, leathery accent in the far dry down, which is giving that luxurious handbag image that Hermes does really well. It is the least leathery in comparison to Gallo, Virat Valinka, Kelly Kalesh. All those also do this fruity leather idea. Hermes also calls this a sheeper, which is not in the traditional sense in my opinion. Smelling this blind, I really doubt most people will even pick up the leather or sheeper facets at a first glance unless they are told so. They might just think this is a fruity musk. But I can see what Hermes means with the fruitiness and a touch of mossy patchouli in the base. Just like H24 was dubbed a high-tech fougere, this might be called a high-tech sheeper, which would be more fitting. Overall, I do like this. I don't think it is quite at the level of the luxurious qualities of Gallo, Cuir d'Ange, Virat Palinka or the Quirky Paddock, but more so an interesting, good quality fragrance in the bracket of Kelly Kalesh and Twilly. It smells like an Hermes, no doubt about that. They maintain that consistency that I talked about. Of course, with it being a mainstream signature release, I'm sure the style, signature and materials that they adopted are going to be different from those more expensive higher end releases, which is fair. So in conclusion, I'm really enjoying this. Would love to smell it on a woman, preferably. I'm not in a hurry to buy a bottle with the other Hermes fruity leathers I already own, but I'm certainly going to continue testing this before closing the chapter. Either way, that's been my impressions of Barenia from Yermes. Thanks for watching, take care and ciao.